Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And today we're going to have a quick Photoshop tip video to show you how to remove the texture from the subject in your scene. And we're going to remove that texture without using a layer mask or the eraser tool. Can't be done? Oh yes, it can. Let us dive into Photoshop and find out how. That was really funny in my head and wow. <laughs> Introductions as always to get us started. This is my new wonderful friend, Addis Thrasher. You can see more of her amazing artwork and very unique talents by visiting the Instagram account at the link below. So we got together recently to shoot a series for Halloween and she portrayed a character that she does at different events. It's this beautiful, scary, creepy clown. And I thought, what better way to tell a story for Halloween by having the scary, creepy clown invite you in to her house of pain and horror. <laughs> so I bought the background texture from Adobe stock. It's this house of pain and horror with arms coming out of it. She's smiling and beautiful and it's great and everything fits. And I need one more thing to tie it all together. And especially from a composite perspective, I need to utilize something that can unify the background stock and the picture of her to make it look all believable. So I went to my stock library of textures and images and I landed on this one. I love this piece of stock. It's got a lot of gritty texture into it, the colors, everything about it. I mean, it just, it feels dark and scary and gloomy. It's certainly fits the narrative of what we photographed. So I need to bring this into my document. So I'm gonna hit V for the move tool and I'm gonna hold shift, click anywhere in the picture and then bring it up to the tab that says untitled one. This is my living document and then bring my mouse over anywhere into the document. And when I let go of the mouse and the shift key, it will drop this piece of stock precisely into the center of the document. Now in my layer stack here, this is the original layer of Addis and I extracted her from the background using a layer mask. So I've dropped the stock above her, but it's below these two curves adjustment layers that I added into the scene just to add a little bit more color and drama. So the first thing I need to do is to resize this piece of stock to have it fit the entire document. On the move tool, I wanna to make sure that this box is checked that says show transform controls. Now all of these bounding boxes are active. So I'm gonna hold alt or option and come to any corner. And because I'm holding alt or option, it will let me resize all of them at the same time. I wanna make sure that the stock goes well beyond the edges of the document because I also wanna rotate the stock. All of the leading lines of the background stock image of the House of Pain and of Addis, they're all leaning a little bit to document left. So I'm going to move my mouse over to one of the corners and just rotate the stock just a touch. And once it's done, I'm gonna hit enter to accept the transformation. And now I need to choose a layer blending mode to blend the stock down to the layers beneath it in the layer stack. In a previous video on the channel, I talked about layer blending modes and how they're the most powerful tool inside of Photoshop. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to take a look at the card above. It will take you to that video when you're done with this one so you can learn about those blending modes and the ones that are most commonly used. So the ones that are most commonly used to blend stock like this into the layers below is either overlay or soft light. So I'm gonna come over to the layer blending modes and come down to overlay first. And then let's go to soft light. Overlay, soft light. I'm digging overlay. Soft light is usually about a 25% reduction of the effect of overlay. I, I like overlay. It's, it's much more dramatic and much darker. I really dig it. And let's talk briefly about what this is doing. So on a blending mode of overlay or soft light, Photoshop is ignoring the color 50% gray. So there is a lot of 50% gray in this, so it's being ignored, but any of the other colors in that spectrum that are darker than 50% gray, it's using those colors to make everything else darker. So there's a lot of other colors of blue and grays and blacks and so forth into this and that's making this entire scene much much darker which I really dig so that the stock image has two purposes to let the texture the surface texture interact with the scene but also let the colors interact to create new luminosity values in the overall document to make it dramatically lit and dramatically colored so when I look at this I love everything it's doing except the texture on her now, this is a horror image, so of course the texture certainly comes into play within the narrative of this story, but my problem is the texture, it's making it hard for her to be separated from the background. The texture is in the background stock purchased from Adobe. The texture is on top of her. It's tying them too close together. I don't get the feeling that she's in the foreground and that her house of pain is behind her. So I need to remove the texture itself from this piece of stock.
Now I can certainly use the eraser tool, but I would be erasing the actual stock and I don't want to do that. And layer masks are more preferable than using the eraser tool because the eraser tool is actually going to erase the pixels of the layer. And once they're gone, they're gone. But with a layer mask, you're simply just hiding or revealing the layer. So let's use the layer mask. I'm going to put a white layer mask onto it by coming to the layer mask icon here in the layers window. Here's my white layer mask. I'm going to paint black on it to begin to hide this layer. It's going to paint black anywhere where she's at in the document. Well, it certainly removes the texture, but of course it's hiding the entire stock. So all of those other colors that are not 50% gray, they're being hidden. So they therefore don't fall under the influence of the blending mode of overlay. So I need to figure out a different way to do this. I'm going to right click the layer mask itself and come to delete layer mask. How do I get rid of the texture? but preserve all the colors and the luminosity values of the texture of the stock. I'm going to blur it. So I need to make a selection around Addis and then go to Gaussian blur and blur this piece of stock anywhere where she's at so that the texture will blur away, but all the colors and therefore the subsequent luminosity values because of the blending mode of overlay will still be into play. So I happen to have the perfect selection of Addis here in the original image with this layer mask that I used to extract her from the original image. So I'm going to hold control or command and click the layer mask. And when I do of Addis, it makes a perfect selection around her. But this selection is not just tied to this layer mask. I can go to any layer in the scene and the selection stays there. So as I'm continuing to work, if I want to add an adjustment layer to affect just her, but not the background, I can make this selection of her and do that. Or I can invert the selection by holding control or command and the letter I for invert. And then I can make changes to the background, but protect her. Selections are a wonderful way to be able to strategically work on something inside of your document itself. So with this selection active, I'm going to come to the layer of the stock itself, then come up to filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And instantaneously, the texture is gone. It's being blurred out, but all of the colors and luminosity values and the blending mode of overlay are all still in play. But be cognizant of the fact that the colors are actually being blurred. There's just so many of them and they're so similar that we still have that overall effect of darkening and the luminosity values. But if you use this technique on a piece of stock that has very recognizable patterns of color, those patterns are going to blur out. So just be cognizant of that as you increase the radius of Gaussian blur to get rid of that texture. But when I hit OK, now the texture is gone but all the values of light and color, the blending mode of overlay are still preserved. I'm gonna hit control or command and the letter D to deselect. And I'm actually gonna go back two steps in my history real quick though. I'm gonna hit control or command and the letter Z twice, and that'll take us two steps back in the history before I did the Gaussian blur, just so we can see a before and after. So this is with the texture, that's without it. Before, after. So simply blowing out the texture, but none of that luminosity changes. None of that color changes. We preserve the overall effect of the scene itself. Again, hitting control or command and letter D to deselect. Without the texture, the stock I should say, and afterwards, without and with. So adding stock into a composite, adding stock into any image, adding textures and colors into any image, especially when you explore the layer blending modes, are a great way to add more elements of story, direct the audience's focus, and complete your vision. And using this selection method and blurring out the textures can take away any distraction of that piece of stock, but let everything else still affect the image and create that narrative and story. So, that's the end of this short Photoshop tip for today. If you like the content you found in this video, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks so much for watching today and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.